Hi, and welcome to the Imaginal Podcast. This is a place that protects and explores what we need to actualize our uniqueness. And like the caterpillar, who carries its butterfly blueprint in its imaginal cells all the way to the chrysalis and then melts into liquid before it transforms. We too have an inner knowing that can tell us how to make our wings. And here's your host, life coach and consultant, Lori Sauce, who goes most commonly by her nickname, Sauce. Hello, it's Sauce. Welcome to the podcast. I'm always so glad to be with you. And I'm really excited about this little series that we're doing. It started last week. And I definitely think that it's important to listen to these in order because I'm going to take you through a series of episodes and you'll bring what it is that you're hoping to express in your life or something that you're trying to create or contribute or reclaim but you found that you are slightly resistant to it, but it means a lot to you. Of course, it would be so much easier if we were sitting together and I could hear your answers and then I could tailor it straight to you and then intuit what else might be specifically helpful for you to uncover or to be curious about. But nonetheless, I think we can definitely get somewhere if I go slowly through some of these steps And you take the time to really sit with these questions and also honor the wounds that you may have experienced in younger years and also unstick some of the things that globbed onto you, some narratives or some criticisms or something that for some reason you believed along the way. And so what I would really love to do is to see if we can free you up so that you can move into these things that you're passionate about and so that you can express and experience your life in the ways that are most meaningful to you. And as I thought about it, I thought that maybe the best way would be to do some short episodes to get you thinking. And if you can just stay with the questions and really honor your heart and honor your life and query who you are at your core and what you are meant to bring to the world or to your relationships or how you're meant to experience life right now. In this case, I definitely think it's important to go in order because I will be really intentional about things that I say each episode and about the questions I ask. And skipping those steps could make it a lot harder to actualize things. So episode 124 last week is where we started and we talked about your three goals. If you don't have those yet, I would encourage you to just go back and either re-listen to that episode or listen to it if you missed it and come up with the things that are most important to you. And if you don't have three, that's completely fine. It will apply either way. Okay, so assuming now that you have those goals, I would love for you to write those out if you haven't. And if you haven't, maybe pause this recording, write them out, and then come back. And that's important too, to have those goals written out before you continue. Okay, so now you're either with me because you have them written out or you've rejoined the episode now that you've written them out. And today, what I want you to consider is your verbiage. What are the words that you used, and check to see what the tone is of your goals. Because we need to bring your fullness and your truth and your belief to this place. And it doesn't mean you have to believe that you're going to completely knock it out of the park this week. Because chances are, if it's taken you a bit of time to get started on this, there's going to be a complex holding as to why that is. So the first thing I want you to consider, again, is your verbiage. And we might amend that if there's something in there that's subconsciously keeping you a little smaller or a little farther away from those goals. And let me also bring the caveat here that the word goals, I don't love the intonation that goal, the word goals sometimes brings because sometimes we become striving. I mentioned this last week. 
we think that we aren't good enough until we've achieved these goals. And we might dismiss our value as people until we've crushed it. (laughs) But that's actually not a great place from which to come because it feels oppressed, could feel oppressed. And also it's peppered with doubt and comparison. Oftentimes you'll look around and see if you're actually good enough. And so then you're not really tapping into your gifts. So when I say goals, what I mean is your uniquenesses. What is it that you are passionate about? Things that you would like your life to express or contributions that you have to bring to the world or to a relationship or it really could come in so many forms. But what is it that you really want to access and actualize. Okay, back to the verbiage. Would you this week consider whether or not your words have substance and belief? Okay, I'm going to use an example in my life so you can see the difference. So if you're a longtime listener to this podcast, you'll know that my biggest goal in life is to sing, to write songs, to sing them, because I have loved it my whole life, but it's also my biggest wound, my shame wound. It's my longtime regret. I didn't sing for decades because of criticism. And so what I'll do is I'll use this example as we go along, just so you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So let's pretend that I'm approaching this goal of singing for the first time, and I wrote the goal down. So verbiage that might need to be shifted slightly would be something like, I hope to be a singer, or one day I'm going to take singing lessons, or perhaps I will finally reclaim this long-held dream of singing. Okay, so when you listen to that, what do you notice about those sentences? And how does it land for you as far as my own conviction? So all of them carry some distance from the goal or some room for not doing it. Or I have put it in the someday category, the hypothetical. So it's still in my ether, which is good, but I'm not yet ready to move into it. So a better goal would be, I'm going to reclaim singing or I'm going to start singing lessons this week or I'm ready to finally be the singer that I was born to be. Now, can you sense a different energy? Because we need that energy. We need to bring in our own birthright and a knowing that this is ours. You have agency over your life. You can choose what you want to do. You know what means something to you and you know your gifts. And even if they have to be developed, look, I... I don't just pop into this and be the best singer in the whole world. In fact, I have quite a journey, which I'll share as we go along, but I need to bring the present permission for me to do this. And no one else gives this permission to us. Okay, let me caveat that. You might have someone really encourage you if they see a talent in you, and that's sometimes helpful. But in the end, no one can tell you that you can't do something or that you're not allowed to. And many times, it's you that can make that change. You can shift yourself into that possibility. And the verbiage is really important. So this week, if you can take your three goals, or your one goal, or your two goals, and adjust the verbiage so you're bringing it into the present tense, and it's grounding the solidity of your worth in this place, then we will proceed with it. But we all have to bring ourselves into the present moment with this goal, okay? If you have a hard time doing that, that's okay. If you find resistance, then I want you to do some deep listening to yourself and see if you can uncover the reasons or the stories that prevent you from claiming this right. And then after you do, I would love for you to imagine a different truth. Whatever you believe does not have to be what you believe for the rest of your life. It was probably projected onto you. 
It was probably spoken thoughtlessly, or it could have been just someone else's insecurity. But for whatever reason, and oftentimes it's in our younger years, you believe something. Let's now consider that doesn't have to be your truth. So do the deep listening with a lot of compassion and then go back to switching your verbiage and bring it to a place of solidity and ready for the current time. Okay. I'm skipping anecdotal lightness and things that are funny again, because I want to keep this path clear and I want to keep you thinking. All right. I will really look forward to seeing you next time. If you want to connect with me, I'm on Instagram at Lori Sase. It's L-O-R-I-S-A-S-E. Or my website is laurisase.com. And if you're interested in more personal coaching, you can check out how that works on my website. But mostly, I just really believe and desire for you to actualize these things that are holding to you. All right. Thank you, as always, for being with me and have a beautiful week. I'm definitely thinking of you. 